So in this lecture, we're going to create our own AMI. And that AML will basically contain all the updates installed at the time where we create it. It will have Java 8 installed, and we will also contain the app that will run in this course. And we'll download that app from GitHub. I created it myself for that very purpose. So basically that AMI is something we'll use for all the remaining sections. So it's very important that if you want to follow along, you do create your own AMI as well. We'll use it for auto scaling. We'll use it for load balancing. We'll use it for troubleshooting and choosing the right EC2 instance type. All in all, please do this with me. Let's get started. Okay, so the first thing we want to do is start fresh. So let's launch an instance and we'll base our instance off of Amazon's Linux. So I click on select. Now the instance type is going to be the T2 micro because it's free for now. The instance details, we're going to leave it this way. You can choose any subnet you want, um, that you want. For example, we'll put it into C. And all of these look fine. And we are not going to include any EC2 user data in this one. Now the storage looks fine, 8 gigabytes. The tags, no need for tags right now. And the security group, we will select our existing security group, which is my first instance. We'll keep on using that security group alongside the course for now. Review and launch. All looks great. I launch it. Again, I get prompted for an, a key pair. I choose an existing key pair that I have and I choose EC2 Masterclass because I already have it. All right. So now the instance has been created and I'll just pause until it gets created. My EC2 machine is now started. I'm going to get the public IP from here, which is 18.206 and so on. And I will go and SSH into it using my key. And all of a sudden it's asking me for establishing the authenticity of the instance, we'll just say yes, and I am in my instance. So right now, this is an instance and it's virgin. It's just running Amazon Linux AMI. Now, as I said, we're going to install Java 8 and we're going to install a lot of stuff. So for this, in the code download for this class, you have a to create AMI folder, and this contains a script, and we're just going to run the script one by one. I'll explain comments as we go, but we'll copy and paste them for now. And this will basically get our machine ready. So the first thing you may want to do is upgrade the machine. For this, you run sudo yum update minus y. So let's just do this. It upgrades the machine and it can take a few seconds. While this happens, I'll just zoom in to give you a better view. Okay, now we're going to install Java 8 JDK. For this, we run sudo yum, which is the package manager, by the way, install minus while machines yes to all prompts and installing Java 1.8. So let's go ahead and install this. As you can see, the install is happening right now. It's downloading all the files it needs. It will be 130, uh, 43 megabytes to install. So all this time right here, all these things that are happening, you know, it's taking some valuable time. All these things we do it ahead of time and that's why we create our AMI to save ourselves some time. All right, I have Java 8. Now we're going to set Java 8 as the default for our machine. For these, we run these two commands. And basically, they let Java being the default. So we run the first one. And it's going to prompt you for either Java 7 or Java 8. For me, Java 8 is number 2. So I click on 2, press Enter. Now we do it for the compiler as well. So I'll just run the same command. And again, I get selected. 1 looks good. 1 was the only option on this one. Okay, so now if we do Java minus version, as we can see, we have Java 1.8.0. That means that Java 8 was successfully installed and it's going to be used as the default running engine. Now we're going to download the app. So for this, we make sure we are in the home directory, but we already are. So here we go. And then we are going to do a wget. Wget means webget. It's a way to download a file. So the file we're going to download is from my GitHub. So let's just run um, the query, right, the command right now, and I'll show you the GitHub in a second. Okay, the file has been downloaded, and if we do LL, we can see that the file has been downloaded. Now let's have a look at the repository real quick. Here is my GitHub repository, and I'll add a readme and I'll add a few things over time, so it may look slightly different for you. If you like the repo, don't forget to leave a star. It really helps for me to give visibility to this repo. And so what this repo is, it's a Java application. Now for this course, you don't need to know Java, but I just let you know, this is an entirely Java application, but no Java knowledge is required, so don't worry. 
Now this application basically has one Java um, uh, file and that file basically creates a web server and that web server will have a several different routes such as slash of slash CPU slash RAM slash RAM slash info and we'll go over this next lecture okay but this will be the app we run and basically this will be what our EC2 instance will be running over this course okay so the web get command basically went into the release page and downloaded the jar app from here okay right now we're alpha 2 but by when the course is released we should be at version 1.0 okay and I will obviously change the command when that's the case so let's get back to our instance now we have our EC2 masterclass sample app that's created and running so now we are actually going to run it so to test it so we'll run this command Java minus this which gives 700 of memory a megabyte memory to our application minus jar to announce where the jar is and the jar is basically a binary file for Java to run and we reference our file so let's go ahead and paste that command and as you can see you should see a bit of uh, logging info information and it says spark has ignited it's listening on 0.0.0.0 .0 .0 .0 4567 so our application is at 4567 port so let's go ahead and try to access it now if I go to my management console go to my public IP and the port is 4567 what do you think is going to happen well nothing nothing works right why because we have a security group issue if we look at our security group right now we have port 22 port 80 but port 4567 isn't there so we need to add it so again anytime you see like this continuously loading new tab thing um, that means it's usually a security issue because it looks like a timeout so we go to my first instance inbound and edit we're going to add a rule and the rule is going to be port 54567 on protocol TCP and custom we're just going to allow everyone to get in so 0 .0 .0 .0 0.0.0.0 slash 0 the description is Java application press save so now 4567 should be accessible so let's try again let's just copy again our IP which is right here so you can use the public DNS or the IP it's exactly the same for now 4567 and here we go we receive a hello world so I'll just zoom in we receive a hello world and it says the EC2 instance that replied is 172 31 38 39 157 so that's the private IP right here and it says I've received a request from this IP and this IP is my IP okay so the application is working literally our EC2 instance replied um, with our request now you can try the different uh, commands and we'll see over time what it is but CPU goes ahead and computes something look the Fibonacci number and that takes a lot of time you see this function took five seconds to execute now if you go to RAM it will just start filling up the RAM so it gives you some information if you ask the app if it's healthy you say healthy press enter and health sorry not healthy but health here we go it says hey I'm healthy awesome and finally if we go to uh, details as a path it's giving us a lot of information about that request it gives us again the host name my IP and some headers and all these things we'll be using over time but right now the point is that our application is running and that's amazing so we have an application running now I'm going to stop it and if I refresh my page now if I refresh my page as you can see the site can't be reached anymore so our app can run on our machine but it hasn't been set up to run at the machine restart so what we're going to do is copy this entire script okay and this is called EC2 sample app file and what this is is a very complicated in its D script and I'm not going to go over it because usually it's just it's just fluff and you don't need to know it at all but what this script does is literally executing the same command we just executed okay and making sure that we can start get the status stop or restart our application 
So it's a fairly long one. It's not very interesting and it's not the point of this course. So what you do is just copy this entire block, okay, from line 25 all the way down to line 91. Make sure you have everything. And you paste it in here. Press enter. Now we're going to set the permissions to start our application. So chmod plus x basically gives our machine the permission to start the application so we can execute that file. Now we're just going to make sure things work. So we do sudo check config add our application. And then finally sudo check config make sure our application is on. And that will make sure that across reboots our application will be added and running. So okay, here we go. So now what we're going to do is I'm going to do sudo reboot and our application is rebooting. Let's wait a little bit. Okay, I've waited a minute and I'm going to SSH again into my machine. And as you can see, my machine is back up. Now, if I go to my web browser and refresh my page, we can see that our application is running automatically. So what we did right here is allow our application to be starting as soon as the machine starts on this machine. So if I reboot it again, obviously, and wait for it, the website is going to be back up automatically. So what we have right now is a really good state because we have Java installed on this machine. We also have our application downloaded and installed and it's launching itself automatically, which is awesome. That's all we want, right? So now we kind of want to save the state of this machine and be able to launch machines that look exactly the same. So let's get started with this. Now, what we're doing is pretty cool. We're going to go in the EC2 instance console, right click on our machine, do instance uh, image, image and create image. So now this goes ahead and creates an AMI for us. So let's get started and call it our image name, EC2 sample app. And the image description is EC2 machine that runs our Java application for this course. All right. Um, so we don't take no reboot. We definitely don't want to reboot. So we want to take an image from our instance volume or root volume, eight gigabytes, this one, and looks really great. So I'm going to create an image from it. Create image. Now we have a pending image request, which is this AMI. Now, if you looked at it in the top right, I just got a notification saying that the instance is restarted. So as soon as I basically asked to create that image, the system went down for a reboot. And that reboot is necessary so that Amazon can basically create our snapshots. You can always disable that reboot, but you may get a corrupted file system. We don't want that and we're happy for our instance to reboot anyway. So let's just do that. Now you need to wait for a bit before this AMI is created. So I'll just give it a few minutes. Okay, so our AMI is being created. And as you can see, the status is now available. So Let's go ahead and create an instance now from it. So if I right click, I can do launch. Now, if we look at the AMI that's being chosen, I can go back to one. It goes in from my AMI, which is now filled and say it's going to be launched using the EC2 sample app. So that's awesome because now we can start a machine that looks just like our old machine. Again, we'll launch it on a T1, a T2.micro next. All looks great. Next, add storage. All looks great. Tad tag, perfect. Security group. We'll just keep the existing security group that we had before. My first instance. Review and launch. And launch. We use the same key pair. And here we go. So now we have our new instance right now getting created, right? And that instance is actually going to be a pure copy of the one we had before. So if everything goes well, when we go to that IP right here and go to that port that we had before, 4567, we should see our application being launched and we'll have achieved exactly what we want. So I'm just going to wait a few minutes for the instance to start and we'll see if that worked. So my instance is now launched. And if I go to the public IP, open a URL, go for port 4567. Here we go. It's working. Our app is launched. It says hello world by and that's a completely different instance. Before it was 31.39.157, now it's 31.39.1111. So it's a different IP, and the request obviously is on my computer, so the receive request from is exactly the same. But here we go. Now we have 
two instances, this one and that one, running our application as soon as the instance starts. And so that's that's the real power of AMIs right here, is that we can go ahead and in a split second, create a snapshot of our instance, launch a new instance from it, and here we go, we just copied our states. And that was much faster. And remember, I only did the setup once. So that's pretty cool. I hope you see where we're going with this. But now we have our own AMI that will launch our own app ready to go very, very quickly. So we'll soon get into load balancing and auto scaling and all that stuff. But that was an entire lab towards creating your AMI. Again, just to remember, it's in the bottom left. You'll see the AMI under images and you can see it's available right now and it's, everything's working very well. Okay, well, I hope you liked it and I will see you in the next lecture to just take a step back on what we did.